So what I'm going to do is, is um, go through the various pieces of equipment that we have and show you how to use them, show you what they're for. When you pick up your, your, um, your samples, your sample kits, um, this, is, this is what's going to be in it. And first of all, there's a, there's a manual. And it talks about um, all of the parameters that we measure for and what they're, why we do it. Um, there's also uh, various forms that are waivers for liability and all that sort of stuff that we have to do. And maybe more importantly, there's, there's an example in there of a data sheet that you'll be filling out when you're actually doing the, doing the sampling. And I'll be doing that today as well, and I'll show you what's on it. And I found that it's a form that you can um, use to keep you organized, if you will. If you go down this, this form in the order that things are, are in it, you'll be sure that you won't miss anything when you're out on the, on the lake actually sampling. And then there'll be a clipboard that has the actual data uh, monitoring form on it. There will be a Secchi disk in it, and the Secchi disk is what we use to measure two things. We measure to use the we use it to measure the depth at the site, and also uh, it's a measure of the sediment load or the turbidity of the water. There will also be a water sampler that looks like this, and I'll show you how to use this in a minute. And this is what we're actually going to be taking the, the sample of the water with. And we're going to take the, the sample at the depth of what we, at the Secchi, depth, uh, Secchi disk depth. And I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate that as well. I'll demonstrate how to set this, this uh, sampler up in a, in a minute. Um, so also in there are bottles with which to collect the samples and a set of gloves. And I'll go through each one of those bottles in a, in a minute. And then there's also going to be a bottle like this. And this is a bottle that we collect a sample in that we later are going to measure dissolved oxygen content and uh, the acidity of the water or the pH of the water. Then the other thing that's important is, is cleaning the equipment in between times, in between each sampling event. And so in order to do that, we've got a, a brush. It's primarily the sampling tube that you're going to be washing. And you, we need to do it with a phosphorus-free soap because some of the parameters that we're measuring are phosphorus. And so uh, this, this, this phosphorus-free soap is included. There are five bottles, and they'll be in a, in a large uh, Ziploc bag. There are two large bottles. But those are for, one of them is collect, for a collection of a water sample on which orthophosphate will be done. Uh, the other one is a, a bottle, a large bottle, that will have total phosphorus, nitrate, and total nitrogen, uh, Keldal nitrogen, that will be done on that sample. Um, the, the one bottle, the, the total nitrogen one, will have sulfuric acid in it as a preservative. Um, so you don't want to um, you don't want to rinse that you don't want to rinse any of these bottles out while you're taking samples. You want to you want to fill them just as they are. You don't want to do any rinsing with these bottles. Um, so there are the two large bottles for the for the uh, nutrients that we analyze for. Then there's a bottle like this that will come in a separate bag and it will be sealed. It also has a preservative in it. You'll see crystals in the, in the bottom of it. That's sodium thiosulfate, which is a preservative. This sample is used for uh, bacteria, total coliform bacteria. And so I'll show you how to... This is usually the first sample that I take because one of the things that um, is required when you take this sample is to wear uh, gloves so you don't contaminate it. In addition to those two bottles and the bottle for coliform bacteria, we have two little brown bottles 
that are used for total organic carbon. And these also have a, an acid preservative in it. It's important that you don't overfill these. In addition to those bottles, there's a brown bottle with a cap on it uh, that is labeled for your particular site. This bottle is uh, used for dissolved oxygen measurements and for an acidity measurement with a pH meter. And it's really important when you do this sample, and I'll show you how, that this water not contain, this bottle not contain any air when you take the sample. To the actual data form, you fill it in and as you go through this you'll see there are various checklists that we that we follow. Um, and the first one is was the equipment washed prior to sampling? And so if it was, which hopefully it will be, you would put a, a check mark on that. Then from there on it's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, your name, the person who's doing the sampling, or persons, the date, the name of your site, which you'll be assigned, and there are two, two places um, to enter GPS. One is the target, what you're aiming for, and the other is the actual uh, GPS that, where you actually sampled. And then there's also a check mark that says you're either anchored in place or you're drifting. And if you have, if you're in a kayak or something like that or a canoe and don't have a, a, an anchor and you have to reset back to your, if, in between samples, if you need to collect more than one sample and you need to go back to the GPS location, you'll have to put down, you'll have to check drifting on there. Then there's a place for weather. Like today I'd put down sunny, calm, and probably 60 degrees, something like that. I'd make some notes about what the weather is, especially if it's windy or breezy, that can be an important um, uh, indication that you would indicate on the on the on the weather line on this on this form. Um, and like I said, there's a sample form in the in the manual that will show you what um, what to what to put down, how to put it down, and um, and that. From there, then we get into actually the the sampling. And there's a there's an order on this sheet, and I found that it's I found that it's easy to follow the order on the on the sheet. Um, that way, you don't miss something as you go through it. The first thing on the on the uh, on the list is for a sample for coliform. Of bacteria and and E. coli, and uh, it's This is a this is a sample that's taken on the surface of the water. It's the only sample that's taken on the on the surface of the water, except for temperature, and um, and it requires that you wear gloves uh, so that you don't contaminate the sample. And um, there's a place over on the on the right hand side of this form again to check that gloves are worn and that it's a surface grab sample. And then the other thing is that we ask that all the samples, once they're taken, be stored in, on ice in a cooler. It's got a preservative in it that you don't want to, so you don't want to overfill it to the point where that preservative comes out of it. And you just reach down and let it come into the bottle, just fill it up like that, and recap it. And then one other thing, these, these sample bottles will all come pre-labeled to an extent. They'll come pre-labeled with the location, the date, and what the parameter is that you're going to measure. What it, doesn't, what it doesn't have on it is the, is the time at which the sample was taken. Now there's a place on the on the data sheet for the time, to, to record the time, for instance, right now it's 6 o'clock, so I would put down 6 p.m. And then on the bottle itself, there's a place for a time. So you put 6, 
and then it says a.m. or p.m. and this is p.m. so I'd circle the p.m. and then there's a place that says buy and that's a place to enter your name you can obviously do that before you even go out uh, so the really the the uh, only thing that um, you need to put on this bottle when you're out collecting it is the time at which you've taken the sample so that's the that's the coliform uh, bacteria sample it goes back in the small baggie and goes on ice in your cooler the next thing then is to determine the the secchi disk and the depth of water at your sampling site and we do that with the with this with the secchi disk you see it's alternating white and black stripes and we don't have a lot of depth here but um, this secchi disk and the sampler are both are both um, marked with half meter and full meter markings on them the red are the are the half meter so this is a half meter this is one meter this is a meter and a half two meters and so on so to get the depth of course you just lower it until it hits the bottom and then there's slack in it so the depth here is about one meter and I would record that then on the data sheet now the next thing you, you would do with this is that you would lower it down and it, when you're lowering this down it's important that you not have polarized sunglasses on that you um, have just regular eyesight because the polarization will will skew the, the reading so you lower it down until you can no longer see the secchi disc and you lift it up and I can just barely see it right about here and so that's about 0.6 meters so I would do it again just to check it lower it down again till I can just can't see it pull it up so that's about 0.6 meters is the is what the secchi disc is reading here today now that's going to become the depth that we also take the sample at and there's one exception to that and the exception is if the secchi disc goes all the way to the bottom and you can see it all the way at the bottom then your sample will be a half a meter above the bottom so you raise it up a half a meter off the bottom if that's the the case so again go back to the to the form and it says water column depth in meters I put down 1.0 meters the secchi disc is 0 0.6 meters both times then there's a place for an average it's also 0 0.6 and did the secchi disc hit bottom if it did and you could still see it this is not when you're this is not when you're recording the depth but this is if you're if you're actually looking to see if you can see it and it hits the bottom and you can still see it it said did the secchi disc hit bottom you'd put yes if that were the case and if not it would be no so there's a yes and no that you can circle so this is no because it went I could see it I, I lost sight of it at 0.6 meters and so um, it didn't go all the way to the bottom where I could still see it now that becomes a sample depth that's where we're going to take the the various samples that we're we're going to collect for nitrogen for phosphorus and for uh, total organic carbon so there's a place on here for sample depth and I will put down that the sample depth is going to be point, uh, point 0.6 meters.
This is the device that you will use to collect water samples at depth. This is your vertical water sampler. It has a top stopper, a bottom stopper, an outlet tube with a clamp, a thermometer that reads in degrees Celsius, and a spring activated hook. It's attached to a rope and a weight. The rope is measured in meter increments. Red indicates a half meter and black indicates one meter. To set your vertical water sampler, first you pull out the top stopper and then push down on the spring activated hook. This loop then goes into the hole and catches on that hook. Next, you take the bottom stopper, pull it out, and you take this clamp and you put it around both the wires attached to the top stopper. Make sure it goes below these balls and around both of the wires that form the loop so it slides around easily like this. Next, make sure that the clamp on your outlet tube is closed all the way. Then you're ready to put it down to the second disc depth. Once you have it at depth, you will then hold the rope taut and send the weight down the rope. It will then activate the spring and you'll collect a water sample at that depth. You will then pull it up to the surface, read the temperature, and fill your bottles. I'm going to get a temperature of just the surface of the water. And so I just need to, to do that. I just need to take a sample from the surface. And so I just leave one end closed and take a surface water sample. And the only reason that we're doing this now is for the temperature of the at the surface of the water. And this is in centigrade. And it'll take just for a minute for it to, or two for it to equilibrate. It's a pretty fast acting thermometer. So I took the surface water temperature at 610. So it, it's, I put down 610 PM and the water temperature at the surface was 15 degrees, 15 degrees centigrade. So then the next step is to actually take samples and get the temperature at the sampling depth. And I'll arm the sampler as before, attaching the loop through the spring activated uh, catch and then clip around the cable like that making sure that this is closed now and then I lower the sampler into the water down to the six tenth of a meter point which was the Secchi disk and I'll let it equilibrate I may move it up and down a couple of times just to let the water uh, make sure that the, I'm sampling the water at that depth and then I drop the keeper down and I can tell that it released because there was a, a bunch of bubbles that came up. So then we've got a water sample. Sometimes they want to leak a little bit so I make sure that the bottom is, is tight and then I start to fill the various bottles. Just release this and if there's a, a vacuum in it you may have to crack the top if it seals tight enough you may have to crack the top so that the the water will run and you go ahead and fill the water the bottle all the way to the surface all the way to the top if there's a little bit of air in the top it's not a big deal cap it off and then go to another one. So let's fill one of these little guys. This is for total organic carbon and it's actually preserved with sulfuric acid so there's a little bit of sulfuric acid in there and that's to keep any bacterial growth from from growing in there. So I'll put that down and again fill it and in this particular case I like to fill it so that there's a little bit of a 
of a meniscus on top. So it's completely full, so there's a little bit of rounded water on top, like that. You probably can't see it, but it's, it's domed up in a so-called meniscus. Then I take the top. It's important that you don't overfill this because it's got the preservative in it. So if you overfill it, your preservative will come, come out. So you, you want to fill it to the top, but not overfill it and then go ahead and, and tighten that down tightly. I'll continue to do that with the other samples. So other sample bottles. Again, you fill that all the way to the top. I need to fill one more of the brown bottles, but I don't have enough sample in here to do that so I'm going to have to get another sample from down at 0.6 meters so I need to rearm this thing. Make sure that's closed. and drop it. And fill the last of the of these sample bottles. Okay, so once again you have a meniscus and you don't want to do what I just did was which overfill it a little bit. Close that up. So that's the four samples that we took for that's going to have phosphorus, nitrogen, and carbon analyses done. The last thing we're going to do is collect a bottle uh, in this, you'll get a brown bottle like this, and this is going to be for measuring pH and dissolved oxygen. Now when you're taking this dissolved oxygen uh, measure, you want to uh, eliminate as much as possible aerating this stream of water as it goes in there. So the best thing to do is try to run it down the side of the bottle. It's important that this sample be filled all the way to the top so there's no entrapped air in it at all. And I completely fill it. And I might tap it a little bit Make sure there's no oxygen along the side. Then I'll refill it up so it's right up to the top. And then cap it off tightly. And you can check to see if you have any oxygen in it by inverting the bottle. And if there's a bubble in there, you'll want to uncap it and re- um, and, and refill it to the point at the top and, and then put the cap on again and test it to make sure that there's no oxygen in it. And you can see, the, well you probably can't see from there, but there is no, no bubble in there, so there's no, no oxygen. So let's catch up with the data sheet. So, one of the things I didn't check was the temperature at the sample depth. Now that see that's the beauty of following the sheet is that it tells you what you need to collect. So the temperature at the sampling depth was 13 degrees Celsius. So there's a place to put that down and I'm going to again say that I sampled that at 6:20 p.m and 13 degrees Celsius. Then there's a place, the next entry on this is for the sample collections for nitrogen and for phosphorus. So again, 620 was the time that we took those on the average. And then there are again check marks. The lab bottles were filled from the water sampler. Yes, they were. 
water was collecting it at the Secchi disk. Yes, either it was, or you had raised it up a half a meter. If you collected it at the Secchi disk, you check that. If not, you leave it blank. You, you've already indicated up above the actual depth that you took it. And then the, the other one is that samples are stored on an ice, ice and transported on ice to the, to the waterkeeper office. And so I would do that. I would have a cooler. I would put the samples back in this bag and put them on ice. On the bottom of the form, there's a place where you put down the date and time that you delivered the samples to the office. And so, as I said, you, you brought them in at 7 o'clock, you'd put down 7 p.m. on 420. And then there's a place on the bottom for notes. And if you encounter anything that's unusual, say I'm sampling in the river and they're letting out water at the dam, and when you put your Secchi disc in, it's at a 45 degree angle, uh, which has happened, when, especially in September when they start letting water out of the dam to lower the lake. You would make a note of that. There's, there's a heavy current and it Secchi disc is at 45 degree angle. If, um, if when you lower the Secchi disc, you, it encounters a weed bed, not uncommon at all. This is a very common occurrence on many sites. You'd make a note that you encountered a weed bed at two meters or three meters or whatever it, it is. Anything unusual that you observe during the time of sample, and that's it. That's what, that's what it's all about.